Hello and welcome to the Futures Lab. So, this time we're going to try and get two different things done. The first thing we're going to do is going to create weapon 3, which is going to be dual pistols that fire in both left and right directions at once. And we're also going to try and get the player costume to work. So the first thing that we need to do is create our dual pistols costume. So, select your weapon sprite. So I'm going to right click and duplicate. I'm going to move this down. I'm going to rename this as three space hyphen space dual pistols. And then we'll do something nice and simple. I'm just going to delete this and delete this. And I'm just going to make this a bit shorter. I'm going to control C and control V to copy and paste. Let's put that there. And then we're going to click this button here, flip horizontal. And I'm going to hold down the left button on my keyboard. Now this might seem like the slow way of doing things, but if we hold down the left button on our keyboard, we make certain that they're both the same height and we don't accidentally end up with this one being slightly higher or lower. So I'll move that back there and then hold right on the keyboard. And then once the gap is pretty good, then you've got to use this tool here to select both of the pistols and then drag them so that they are centered. And so now, yeah, that looks pretty good. Now we can always come back and adjust this gap and make it a little bit narrower if we want. Let's try that. Yep, cool, let's see how that goes. So now let's code our new weapon. So click on the code tab, then let's go to my blocks and make a block. We're going to call this weapon three dual pistols. Press okay. And I'm gonna drag this down here. We can go with the other weapons. And I'm going to right click on this if to copy all of the code from another weapon. It just saves us a lot of time. If the current weapon is weapon three, that's something we need to change. Create clone of projectile, set the weapon recharge to one and damage to one. So let's slow down the recharge a little bit. Let's make that weapon recharge five and let's make the damage something like three and we can always change those later. And now what we need to do is we need to make sure that we're firing two projectiles, one going to the right and one going to the left. Now there's different ways of doing this, but here's a really simple way. Uh, let's go to control. Let's get out a repeat and we're going to make this a repeat two. And then we're going to get this create clone of projectile and move it into the repeat. And then we're going to go to motion and get out a turn. It doesn't actually matter which turn we do because we're going to say turn 180 degrees. All right, let's give that a test. But first we need to make sure that we have a new cheat code. So here are our cheat codes that help us manually select our weapons. Let's copy one of these and let's say that when the three key is pressed, we're going to set the current weapon to three. All right, so now I'm gonna set the three button and now, oh, nothing's happening. Okay, let's see why. Well, I've figured it out. I've made a key mistake here. Have you figured it out? Although I've created this my block here, I never actually use the my block. So I need to make sure that in our shoot code where we've got our weapon one and weapon two, we also need to get out a weapon three. Put that there. All right, now let's give that a test. Uh, number three. Okay, that's good, that's good. Okay, that's firing those projectiles from both sides. Okay, that's exactly what I want now. There's one more thing we can probably do. You might notice that the projectiles are coming from behind the player, which looks a little weird. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to make it so that the projectiles actually, when they spawn behind the player, they automatically move a little forwards so that they look like they're coming from the weapons, the guns. And there's a very simple way of doing this. Let's go to projectile. 
And you'll notice we've got to move 25 steps inside our repeat until. Let's just get out another move above the repeat until. And let's say another 25 steps. You can change this number depending on how large your sprite is. This bullet looks like it's coming from the weapon. And this looks like it's coming from the weapon. And these also look like they're coming from the weapon. Now, there is one more thing we need to change. You'll notice that every time we pick up a crate, we never get the dual pistols. Now, why is that? Well, it's because at the beginning of the game, we tell the game how many weapons we have. And we have it still set that we have two weapons. So if you go to your weapon sprite, you'll notice that at the beginning of the game, set total weapons to two. And that affects the randomizing code of the weapon. So let's make this, instead of two, let's make this three. And now when we give this a test, ah, straight away, you can see that we got the dual, the dual pistols, but we're also getting the other weapons as well. So as long as you update this number here, as you add new, more weapons, the code will adapt to the number of weapons you have. Now, as you can see, that was nice and simple. That was pretty fast. So while we're here, let's see if we can change the player sprite. Now, remember, there is a very good reason why we have a block, like a box like this. This is our hitbox. And it makes it so that our character doesn't have uh, sort of bits sticking out of the hitbox, like, you know, arms or whiskers or hands or whatever, that might get sort of caught on bits of the platform. And it looks really strange if there's like a sticky outy bit of your character sprite that kind of gets caught on a bit of the platform. So we want all of the collision code to still use a box. And this is how most video games work. But we do want to have a different shape, like a skin that goes over the hitbox. So you decide on your character, and it doesn't matter what you choose. I'm going to choose the T-Rex. So I am going to look up the T-Rex. I'm going to choose this one. I've added that as a new costume in here. Duplicate whatever costume you've chosen. And we're going to make one of these purple boxes around one of your duplicates. So let's make a purple box like this. And what you want to do is you want to make a hitbox that's almost but not entirely the same size as your character. And the reason for that is because the character always kind of hovers a little bit above the platforms because of the way that we've made the code. So if you have the characters sort of sink into the platforms a little bit, it will look a little bit better. Once we have got a hitbox set up, and we can change this later, so don't stress too much, what we want to do is with this hitbox, we want to click the back button right here, and that will send it all the way to the back. And then we're going to use this tool to select all the different parts of your character and carefully delete them, but leave the hitbox where it is. So now we should have these two different costumes, one that's a box and one that's your character. So first let's name these costumes. So I'm going to name this costume T-Rex. Then I'm going to name this costume Hitbox. We have this old costume and we don't need that anymore. Now obviously your character is probably going to be way too big for your level. So that's something that we need to change. Let's go to the code. Let's look for when green flag clicked. And we won't be needing this code today. So I'm gonna zoom in on this. When green flag clicked, we need to set the size of our character. So I'm gonna try 30%. Let's set the size to 30%. Let's hit go, and yep, yeah, that's about right. That's about what I want the size of my character to be. And now what we're going to do is we're going to switch between the costumes during our code. So have a look at your forever loop. Now have a look at all this, moving right, moving left, gravity and jump. All of these things need to be being run while your costume is a box and that prevents all of those collision problems. So what we want to do is we want to switch the costume to a box here, and then once all the collision code has been run, 
we're going to switch back to the dinosaur at the end. So if we go to looks and get out a switch costume to hit box, put that at the top of the forever, and then get out a switch costume to your character at the bottom, let's see what that looks like. Okay, so now you'll notice that you never see the hitbox. All of this code is being run, and then at the very end, it displays on screen after it's run all these calculations of the, of the collision and that kind of thing. So you will never see the box, but it's there doing all of this important work, making sure that your collision is nice and clean. So now the next thing that we need to do is we need to make sure that our dinosaur or our character is turning left and right. Um, but it is very important that your hitbox never rotates. So we're going to go to motion. We're going to get out set rotation style. We're going to put that right at the top of the forever. And we're going to put another one right at the bottom of the forever. Now the first rotation style is going to be don't rotate. And the second rotation style at the end is going to be left, right, because we want our character to be facing left or right. Now we need to actually put in some rotation code into our player. So let's have a look for our define move right and our define move left. So let's get out a point in direction 90. We want to put that right underneath where it says if key right arrow pressed. Yep, and that's pointing right. And now we need to go down to define move left and put in a point in direction minus 90 right underneath if key left arrow pressed. Let's see if our dinosaur is turning and they are. Excellent, that's exactly what we want to see. Now, at this point, you'll notice that the weapon looks a little bit weird. We've still got the little purple hands that don't really work for the dinosaur anymore. So let's adjust some of our art uh, and make it seem like it all fits together a bit better. So let's have a look in our costumes of our player. And first of all, these little T-Rex arms. I'm going to delete mine because I'm going to animate the um, hands on the weapon. But the other thing I'm going to do is just click somewhere on the dinosaur so that your fill color is now a particular color. Then select your fill tool here and let's go across to the weapon. And what we're going to do is we're gonna click on the little hands on all of our weapons. Make sure that you click inside the colored bit, not around the outside. Now we've got a lot more of a sort of natural look. And I kind of like this effect. It makes me think of the Rayman games, like these floating hands. You might not like it. And so if you wanted, you could do sort of create like little arms, like try and create sort of like little arms to connect up to the, the dinosaur but that's up to you. I'm going to just leave it with just the hands. And I'm also gonna shrink my weapon down a little bit. So I'm just going to try size 80 and we'll see what that looks like. Okay, all right, now that looks a lot better. Now, the other thing you might need to do as well is you might need to reposition the weapon. Have a look, like drag the entire weapon and then sort of move it around. Remember, you want the center of the sprite to kind of be in between the two little hands. And you may want to move it up or down, uh, depending on what you want. Now that I've scaled everything down a little bit, everything's a bit smaller, I'm also gonna make just a few other little changes. I'm going to make the crate a little bit smaller. Let's try that at 80. Uh, that looks pretty good. In fact, I might even try size 70 on the crate. Yeah, I think I like that. And what I'll also do is I think I'll slow the enemies down a little bit. So if we go to the enemy sprite and look in the code, um, we set their speed at the beginning. So let's make that go down to three. And that might look a little bit better. Yep, I like that a lot more. And what we'll also do is we'll add a sprite costume to the enemy. 
So as before, we're going to go into the costumes and choose something for the enemy. Now I'm going to choose a Stegosaurus. Uh, let's try 2A. Duplicate, do a box around the Stegosaurus. Click the back button, delete all the different parts of the Stegosaurus. So now we've got our Stegosaurus's hit box. And then this, I'm going to call it Steg. And now we don't need this costume one anymore. Now we're going to need to make this a lot smaller and be careful because depending on how narrow this gap is, you might need to make the enemy a lot smaller or else widen the gap a little bit so that the enemy doesn't get stuck. Um, so I'm gonna try 30%. Let's see, yep, that seems good. The Stegosaurus is spawning. Now what we need to do is some of the same things we did with our T-Rex. Uh, go into the when I start as clone look for the forever loop, set rotation style at the beginning and set rotation style at the end. We want to set it to don't rotate at the beginning and set it to left right at the end. Then we need to change the costumes. So we go to looks, we switch the costume to hitbox at the beginning and we switch the, switch the costume to steg at the end. Now there is one interesting little glitch here. Uh, now, if you start shooting the monsters, the bad guys, you'll notice that when you get that white flash, it appears as a big box because all the code that makes the enemy flash and pause for a second is while it has the hitbox costume. So this is fairly easy to fix. All we need to do is look for our take damage my block. And what we need is the opposite of what we're doing here. So we've got our switch costume to hitbox and switch costume to steg. Let's right click and duplicate this whole block of code. Carefully take this over. We want the steg part to go right underneath if touching projectile. We don't need any of these, so let's throw those away. And then we need the hitbox part to only happen at the end. So now, if the Stegosaurus takes damage, it will make sure it swaps to the Stegosaurus costume, then swaps back to the hitbox costume, uh, just in case more collision needs to happen. So now let's see if that is still happening. Nope, that's good. They are now not flashing into a box, they are flashing as a Stegosaurus. Now, of course, the other thing you've noticed is that the Stegosaurus is not rotating. So let's have a look at our X move. So here we have our X move, and we should be able to do something very simple here. Let's go to control, get out an if then else, put it right here. I'm just going to check to see if the enemy's X speed is moving uh, positively. So it's a positive number. That means they're moving to the right. And if it's moving negatively, then it means that they're moving to the left. So we just go to operators, we get out a more than operator, put it right into the if then else. Then we go to variables and get out our x speed. Make sure it's not the player x speed, make sure it's x speed because this is the enemy's x speed. Then if it's more than zero, we're going to point in direction 90. So get out that from here. Yep, 90. But if it's not, then we're going to point in direction minus 90. Okay, let's see if that works. Okay, that's great. So now we've got our Stegosaurus is pointing in the right direction. And that looks really good. Don't forget to subscribe and ring the bell to see the next episode. Let me know in the comments what you would like me to do next, or if you need any help. I can't answer the comments like I used to, but if you're an experienced coder, see if you can leave a comment to help people who are asking questions. Aside from that, stay awesome, be cool to each other, and take care of yourselves. We'll see you next time, ninjas.